Impetigo is caused by bacteria, specifically group A beta hemolytic streptococci, staphylococci, or a combination of both. It can occur where there is poor hygiene or as a secondary infection in areas that have been injured or bitten by insects. This condition may occur in adults, but it's more common in children. It also occurs more commonly during hot, humid times of the year. The infection is highly contagious and it spreads through direct contact with the blisters or crust of an infected person or by touching contaminated objects. Impetigo patients may experience symptoms such as vesiculopustular lesions, which are small blisters filled with fluid that could also be purulent, erythema and edema around the affected area, itching, and a burning sensation. The lesions progress to a stage where they ooze and form scabs. The clear serous fluid inside the blisters becomes cloudy and the blisters break open, leaving behind honey-colored scabs covering open sores. The face, mouth, hands, neck, and extremities are most commonly affected. As nurses and nursing students, it's important to know how to manage and treat impetigo. The treatment approach involves both systemic and local interventions. Systemic antibiotics like oral penicillin, cephalexin, or erythromycin may be prescribed to target the underlying infection. Local treatment includes warm saline or aluminum acetate soaks to help remove the crusts, followed by gentle cleansing with soap and water. Topical antibiotic creams or ointments such as mupiracin or retopamulin can also be used to promote healing and may be applied with clean or sterile cotton swabs. Impetigo is very contagious, so preventing its spread is crucial. Good hygiene practices play a vital role in controlling the infection. We need to ensure that patients with impetigo are placed in contact isolation if hospitalized and precautions followed to prevent transmission to others. We should emphasize the importance of hand washing, especially after contact with the patient or their belongings. Covering the blisters with a bandage and advising the avoidance of scratching them can also reduce the risk of spreading the infection. Nursing students should educate patients and their families about proper hygiene measures at home. These include using separate towels, linens, and dishes for the affected individual, washing their personal items in hot water with detergent separately, and maintaining a clean environment by regularly disinfecting services. Patients and caregivers should also be advised that the infection is still transmissible for the first 48 hours after starting antibiotics. By understanding the causes, symptoms, and treatment of impetigo, nurses and nursing students can effectively contribute to the care and management of patients with this condition. With proper education and infection control practices adherence, we can help prevent the spread of impetigo and promote the healing process for those affected. Thank you for watching and let me know in the comments if you have any questions.